Uh, welcome everyone, welcome to Gathering a Roll, tabletop news program for, of course, uh, January 24th, 2018. Uh, I hope everyone is having a great day out there and uh, enjoying yourselves. It's time for all the tabletop news of that have come coming out the past week. All your RPGs, CCGs, uh, party games, board games, card games, you name it, anything that's come out, including some new Kickstarters that are out there, we'll talk about it today. But why don't we dive into, of course, the tabletop news with the CCG Binder to start out with, and some Magic the Gathering. So the Magic Gathering, there isn't any major news, nothing like the releases that came out in Arrivals of Ixalan over the past week, which we did talk about. Instead, we have the Grand Prix Houston, uh, the Grand, I called it Grand Prix. The Grand Prix Houston, this weekend, it's going to be an Ixalan Block Limited event. So you can definitely uh, look into signing up now. It is open and available. You can check it out, pre-register for it still. Space is limited. But uh, Houston is not the only Grand Prix that's out this weekend. We also have the Grand Prix London, which is also an Ixalan Block Limited. So if you're in London, or perhaps in an area close by to London where you can travel to it, this might be an excuse for you to join in some Magic the Gathering events in uh, Europe. So, yep, two big Magic the Gathering tournaments this weekend for you to check out. But let's move on. We do have some more CTGs with Yu-Gi-Oh! Waves of Light, a structure deck. So it'll be 41 size uh, structure set size, $10 market cost. Uh, each structure deck contain, uh, of Waves of Light contains 36 common cards, 3 super... Super rare cards, two ultra rare cards, a token cards, a beginner's guide, and a double sided deluxe game mat and dueling guide. Whew! So, this is fairies being back in a big way in the new year, harvesting the bounty of wisdom, counter anything you throw at your foes. Uh, the structure of Ways of Light is a. It's based on the counter trap fairy strategy to, and bringing it to new trites. With monstrous spells and traps, your choice to negotiate all the different problems that are there, putting them back together. So if you are interested in that format of uh, using the counter trap fairy strategy, or would like to check it out, this might be an excuse for you to get this product now, with the, of course, Waves of Light, which is available. All right, moving right along, though, we have to move on from our CCG binder to our RPG bookshelf, of course, with some Pathfinder news from Paizo. First off is the final adventure in the Ruins of Aslan Adventure Pass. This is adventure number six, Beyond the Veiled Past. Uh, so you've, you're kind of averting catastrophe. Um, the... I'm never going to try to pronounce this name. The insidious creature that sunk Aslan beneath the treacherous ocean in ancient times is mobilizing his forces, and now your heroes are close to the enemy in their final confrontation. You kind of prepare your allies, you prepare for the final assault, uh, make your way through the submerged ruins of an ancient weapons facility packed with dangerous guardians, unstable magic, and monstrous foes to beat the basically the master of all the enemies that you've been fighting against. Uh, before it reunites this war against humanity and plunges the world into chaos. Because, you know, that's always a terrible thing anyway. Uh, so it's for 15th level characters, this adventure. It combines... It, it's a way to continue your information... It's got some way to continue your adventure in your campaigns. A uh, glimpse into the various pots of the Veiled Masters. Exploration of what the ancient Aslan would have been like in modern-day Galarian. And a bestiary of some more dangerous and monsters and a few friendly ones you might be able to encounter. So, this is the culmination of the Ruins of Aslan Adventure Path, right here and right now, for your 15th level characters. If you've been playing through it, this is a way that you can finally finish it up and end the adventure, of course. Also out is a Pathfinder Player's Companion, uh, Discipline's Doctrine. Um, this is trust and faith, basically. And faith doesn't always mean worshipping a deity. Uh, it could be, you know, faith in other types of things. And um, from the farthest corners of Galarian to its centers of major cities, there's a lot of different types of faith out there. And this explores dozens of cults and traditions, uh, things like the Esoteric Order of the Palantine Eye, which is a part of the Pathfinder Society, technically, sort of, um, and other mystery cults um, that are in Ustalov. I actually had them in Adventure, just, you know, uh, in, if you play Carrion Crown, you encounter them a whole bunch and you can actually join them. <coughs> but anyway, it's got a host of character traits uh, for those with the background in Devotion or Dogma, uh, archetypes for adherence to these doctrines, uh, from the Fist of the God Claw, uh, War Priest, 
uh, for members of the Hell Knight and Seek uh, uh, Hell Knight Seek Orders of the Seeker and Enlightenment. So there's a lot of different groups out there, and also a range of spells for the faithful, those that learn to basically harness them. Um, so it's all about these cults, doctrines, traditions, uh, some archetypes set into those groups, backgrounds for those groups, and some spells. So that's available now. But let's move right along, though. We do have a little bit more on our bookshelf. We, of course, have the Pentex Employees Handbook. This is for W20, uh, Werewolf 20th Anniversary. Uh, the Pentex Employees Handbook is basically the gold standard, uh, the corporate guidebook for using Pentex. The corporation, which ends up being a kind of villainous group in the Werewolf the Apocalypse world. They represent all that is bad with technology, corporations, and humanity to a degree. And oftentimes are manipulated by Worm. Uh, they basically are working for the Worm. Um, so this is basically a volume that contains the main handbook of the employees, along with a guide to werewolves, as they would see it. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, it's as pretty simple as that. It's a guide to working at Pentex, employees' handbooks, uh, for the various subsets within it, um, and contents on basically knowing about the werewolves and board directors. So it is available now if you want to check it out, and if you want to add a little bit better more to your Pentex in your adventure games. Now let's move along. There's some Star Trek Adventures updates. Uh, the new character sheets are available for Star Trek uh, RPG. Now this isn't just anything. Uh, what this is is uh, the, the main elements of the original series and you know Next Generation. Those are the two main Star Trek series. Original Next Generation. There are other spin-offs, other things out there, but those two crews are the ones that, when you think about a franchise, you think about them. You think about Kirk and his crew and Picard and his crew. And you can actually now bring those characters into it. So what these are, are character sheets representing the iconic crews. So it could be that you have... You want someone plays James T. Kirk or someone plays John Luke Picard. They have the crew of the PDF of the USS Enterprise. The original concludes Kirk, Spock, McCoy, uh, Scotty, Sulu, uh, Uhura, Chekhov, and Nurse Chapel. With game statistics for the Star Trek Enterprise itself, if you want to use the Enterprise. Um, now, you do need the Star Trek Adventures Core rulebook, but if you're using your original series, that would do it. But they also have the Enterprise D, which is Picard, Riker, Worf, Data, uh, Jordy, um, Troy, Yar, uh, Tasha Yar. Game is for that version of the Enterprise too. So the fact is that if you, rather than making your own crew and stuff, if you wanted your adventures to be based upon one of these crews, they have everything for it. And you could roleplay them. And it is available now. And it's in PDF form, and now they are $6 a piece for either of them if you want to get them. So, it's just something special if you want to have it, if you really want to play through it. It's available now. Alright, moving on. We have Blitz Freeze, a 5-man in Normandy supplement. Um, it's a new campaign book for the 5 men in, five men in Normandy. As Russia advantage, the Germans retreat... And how will you and your fellow soldiers survive? And that's up to you and your wits. And you can pick up the copy of this book now. Because basically it's Winter 44, which is pretty bad for the German short soldiers as the um, advancing Red Army is basically coming back against them. And that's where it is. It's basically the outskirts of Leningrad, 1944. Uh, Army Group North is in full retreat, overload trucks and stuff. Uh, the offensive of December 43 was shattered. Uh, it's basically tough decisions and tactical choices that ramifications on the whole campaign. Uh, it's available now. For, I think it's technically a war game stuff, but they put it in the RPG section. Oh, news sources. You put it in the wrong section for me to talk about. Oh, well. Uh, this is technically, I think, would have been in another section of our show, but that's alright. Let's move on. We talked about it. Pony Finder! The Devourer of Nations, uh, to found an Empire Book 6. So the Found of Empire series is effectively like the adventure path for Pony Finder, which is a weird Pathfinder version of like a ish, My Little Pony-ish, except I think a little more 
direct just your opponent in a Pathfinder game. Um, yeah, complex there. A little bit. Anyway, uh, your players survive the events of the Thragile Thread, which is the last one, and, you know, it's about seven years later of peace, and nothing is actually as fine as it seems, and the Devourer of Nations, basically, is arriving. Um, it's a 11th level adventure, uh, for parties 3 to 7. It comes as a gun premiere for a lengthy adventure, of many sessions. Um, it concludes... It continues to include events seven years after the last adventure. So that's the important thing about this all, is seven years have passed by since the last adventure in the world of Everflow. Um, so, yeah, our heroes will see the kingdoms and tribes come together and form an empire, maybe even experience the transformation themselves. Yep. All right. Pony Finder. Next one's available. I, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're up for it. Anyway, let's move on, though. Quill! The white box has been released. Uh, if you had been in one of my previous shows, and we did talk about it on Discussing Tabletop, uh, Quill is a single-player RPG. One that you're... It basically is a solo letter-writing RPG. And it's a very unique concept that has its own setup for how things would work within it. But what they've done is they've come out with an expansion that is available now, now available, the white box. The White Box basically is a set of five new fantasy adventures that you can do the solo letter writing campaign within. And e each of these is a kind of inspired by versions of famous fantasy games. Um, so the first time, for the first time, you kind of create a fat classic, uh, classic fantasy character from classes like fighter, thief, elf, dwarf, each with their own unique special abilities to help you on your letter writing adventures. And you use this character through multiple adventures, gaining treasure, magical items, enriching perfumes, hypnotic parchments, etc., etc. Um, so the five adventures are The Demon Hunted Tower, The Elven Princess, Uncharted Waters, Feigned of the Underking, and Beast of Nightwood. So you can complete them all uh, in a big long sitting, one at a time, etc., etc. That this is a single player RPG. And this is the latest expansion from it that you might want to check out. You can, of course, uh, download it now on Drive-Thru RPG for $4. Not a bad price for five adventures, especially if you enjoyed Quill before. Moving right along, Corvus Belly Infinity, the role-playing game. All right, uh, it's Infinity, the role-playing game. It's really bad. Um, it, it, Infinity Miniatures game from Corvus Belly is basically what this is based upon. This is the Infinity RPG based on the miniatures game, which has already come out. And I think I talked a little bit about what Infinity stuff is, but now there's a whole lot of books out for Infinity. Uh, Modifius has released a big chunk of them. There is the core book, the player's guide, adventures in the human sphere, uh, quantic heat books are all available for you to get. So that is quite a bit of books for you to get. I believe last time I talked about it, I was talking about their quick scar guide that they were releasing to go along with it. But now they have these four books out in the Infinity RPG series. So if you looked into the quick start rules previously, or you even, which are free, may I note on Modif Modifius' site, or if you had checked out their core book before and were interested through that, this might be a way for you to dive into it. Um, they have a lot more stuff. Uh, the player's guide definitely would be a very helpful one to help shape your things. Um, it, it's meant to be a cinematic, action-driven uh, RPG system uh, with heat and momentum being the two twin engines of it. Uh, there's many battlefields, manufactured zones, all kinds of different things. It's, it's, it's meant to be a very ultimate science fiction RPG. And the core book itself has 500 pages of full color that you can go through, that you can dive into. Uh, the player's guide, of course, has a lot of information about um, uh, some conversion guides between various, like the miniature system into the RPG system. Um, information that helps you build your character more and get more in depth. Uh, the human sphere, of course, and the... Uh, uh, Quadratic Heat are other expansions that bring more information into your Infinity RPG worlds or adventures as you see them fit. So, if you like the Infinity RPG, either by checking out the core, the core previously or the Quick Start rules, maybe you want to get some other books that are out now. Alright, let's move on to, of course, our card game desk. We do have a couple here. Um, let us 
start out with, of course, <coughs> I forgot my water. That's great. Um, the Fla uh, King's Mood. The Game of Th uh, Thrones card game uh, has a new, of course, chapter pack available for it. King's Mood. Uh, so, if you've continued what I've talked briefly about a lot of these Game of Thrones card game expansions, they add new things, they add new characters, uh, do, uh, despicable characters, monsters, various things, uh, things that help you in your quest to claim the Iron Throne on your own, and this is, uh, the third chapter pack in the Flight of Crows cycle, and is available now. It continues the themes, uh, and traditions of the game's fourth entire cycle of cards, uh, adding fuel to the bestow keyword and new ways uh, for your characters to place gold uh, and to impact the game. So it's 60 new cards, three copies of each of 20 distinct cards, and they're making their dispute in this expansion. Um, it's a little bit about Dreadfort and, um, and House Bolton. Some House Bolton cards, too. So, we say loyalty. You know, they're like, you know, what loyalty will you have? Bolton, Stark? That's a lot. It's a lot of options new, but um, it's available now if you're looking into playing some of, of course, the Game of Thrones card game. All right. Let us once again move on. We have some uh, from our card game desk to our board game pile. Of course. To Lancelot. All right, Lancelot. So, we're looking back at Camelot, of course. You know, it's not all the uh, excess, the fun, in-between, you know, adventures. A lot of things were going on in between, you know, the scenes. Basically, you have your major quests and then your, you know, happy excitements afterward. But basically, you know, we're talking about Lancelot and Guinevere um, getting together. You know, that the queen was basically shacking up with one of the knights. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice way of saying it. They were having an affair. <laughs> um, so, all knights are looking to perform uh, daring deeds and earn value. Um, and that's basically what you're doing in Lancelot. Looking for the valor and stuff. Um, it's available in North American stores. It's designed for two to four players. And you take on a right of a knight of Camelot within King Arthur's court. Your main goal is to travel the lands of ancient Britons, complete quests, and grow virtue to be elected the first knight, Lancelot, and win the heart of Queen Guinevere. So basically, you're all trying to become Lancelot and get Guinevere, which is the queen. So it's a very unusual kind of thing. But let's, let's not dive into the, you know, you're trying to woo the queen and have an affair kind of thing. But that's... We're not gonna. We're not diving there. Anyway, players take turns moving clockwise around a game board, uh, stopping at various locations, uh, like a stronghold for weapons. Uh, maybe you go to the lake to get the legendary Excalibur, a, a dragon to complete quests, and you might even try to search for the Holy Grail. Uh, you're free to move as you want, but you must move carefully because uh, you're collecting virtue points along the way. And once everyone's moved around their board, once the, a new round starts, and after seven rounds, whoever's earned the most virtue points wins. Uh, now, beginning each round uh, by taking a seat at the round table. Each spot gains advantage and bonus based on the famous figure from Legends of Camelot. Uh, King Arthur helps gain more virtual. Marilyn gets more, gets like a free potion. Uh, and even Morgana would grant you a unique bonus. Uh, you're able to circle the board twice. Uh, choose the ally that best suits you and play style and switch it up basically because there's going to be a match of special abilities and goals that you're going to use together to have it. Um, it's available for $55 now. So it is a bit of a price, but it is a full board, uh, lots of little cards, miniatures, things like that. So it is a full, full big old game. Uh, 90 tokens, 16 tiles, uh, 85, 85 cards, woolen cylinders and discs, a lot of stuff to it. So, Lancelot's available now. Uh, you can download the rules from WizKids website. Uh, you can check it. It's uh, released now. If you want to be the first knight and steal Queen Guinevere's heart. Take that, King Arthur. <laughs> I feel bad saying that now. Anyway, um, Star Trek Frontiers. The, ret the Return of Khan expansion. Uh, you know, we can make all our, you know, Khan jokes uh, for um, the original Star Trek. Khan! Uh, um, and, you know, it's one of the more iconic villains 
of Star Trek, of a lot of things, especially Star Trek lore, of course. And uh, this expansion for Star Trek Frontiers from WizKids uh, basically gives you a little bit of that tactical genius level that Khan was. And so you're entering into it. So you're kind of following in the footsteps of the original Star Trek for New Year's, and this expansion brings the same level of content that was in it, and uh, it together has more strategic choices that awaits you in this expansion, and a lot of stuff that the fans of the series would like. So it's got 114 cards, the rule book, data dice, uh, data crystals, a USS Enterprise ship figure, uh, Pequod ship figure, some space map tiles, encounter tiles, skill tokens, round tokens, etc., etc., etc. Lots and lots of tokens, lots and lots of stuff. It's for one to five players. It's going to take you about an hour to play. Again, because it's WizKids, downloadable rules if you want to check it out. Um, and it's available for $50 right now uh, for retail. So, Star Trek uh, Frontiers Return of Khan out now. All right, let's move on because we don't have anything in our party game closet. So let's move away from our board game pile to our Kickstart display because we do have a couple of Kickstarters to talk about. Uh, let's start with Path of Black Flag, an anarchist game supplement. Um, so, it, you know, there's a lot of things about anarchy out there. You know, you could look to movies like V for Vendetta, um, things about just being anarchists in general. But sometimes maybe you want to bring anarchy to your... Pathfinder games, your RPGs, and well, this is the way you do it. Um, it you know, it's like, as an, it's bringing uh, anti-authority themes to your role-playing games if you want to use those. Um, it's, it's a supplement for basically being anarchist characters, for themes and plots, and various things like that. Um, and it's out on Kickstarter now. It's gone about. Oh, uh, a quarter of their goal, 17 days to go, and, you know, I think that's, we'll keep it simple at that. So, if you like anarchist characters, or you have a little bit of anarchist in you, maybe you want to check this out now. All right, also out, though, is Nemesis, a sci-fi board game. Um, you know, it, it, when you use the word nemesis, it's kind of enemy, something that's going against you. And this is a semi-cooperative sci-fi board game that's up on Kickstarter. Um, you're basically a crew that's looking to survive a horrific alien experience while also trying to complete your own secret goal that technically might not jive with other crew's goals. So that's what it is. You're all trying to, you know, survive your alien creature, basically like Aliens, the movie, but each has your own goal. So it's a one to five player semi cooperative game. It's got sci fi horror emesis. And um, you will be cooperating, but it also has some solo play. Um, it has its own gameplay uh, that, you weren't, that you're not really going to find anywhere in a board game. At least that's what they're claiming. Its own version, one of a kind. Um, It's got 13 days to go, and to say it's blown its um, goals out of the water is an understatement. Um, it's, um, what's the best way to describe how much money this has earned? It had a goal, it, this was in um, pounds. Of, of, of 50,000 pounds, which is about 70,000 70, American dollars. And it's exceeded that by like 30 times, would it be? Over 30 times. Yes. Yes, it would be over 30, 30 times. Uh, like 31 times. So it's it's hit over two million two hundred thousand uh, American dollars. So it's certainly funded. Um, that's a good way of saying it. Certainly funded. Um, Seventy, about ninety eight dollars seventy pounds gets you the core box and all unlock stretch goals. Uh, they have a captain's collection which is at one hundred forty dollars a hundred pounds. Um, which includes an art card and training expansion, and they got some things above there because they got some retailers and stuff too. It has 25 miniatures, 120 cardboard elements, 280 cards, and 50 other various elements. 
Uh, the roles of the crew are like captain, pilot, scout, soldier, scientist. Um, the intruders has a queen, breeders, adults, creepers, and larvas. Uh, there's the cardboard maps here, portrays cardboard tokens, small cards, regular cards, all kinds of stuff. The miniatures, uh, they go up in size. So it's 32 millimeter for the crew and 98, no, I'm sorry, 97 millimeter for something like the intruder queen. So, um, there's a fifth player expansion that's been added to stretch goals, uh, full co-op mode where you don't have going against each other, uh, don't have that like semi co-op. Uh, rules for someone playing as the intruder, quality upgrades, uh, which they have a whole bunch of, uh, avoid seers, a new type of enemy that they've also added in. Uh, yeah, they've, they've, they've certainly hit a lot of stretch goals, and I don't know if they would have any more at this point in time. But... If you want to get it on and all, get all the stretch goals, this might be a thing for you to check out. It's got um, 13 more days to go. It's an interesting game. Maybe you want to check it out. Nemesis, a board game. It's it's certainly been the most successful I've seen in quite some time. Uh, that's to say the least. Tiny Epic Zombies. Alright. So Tiny Epic Zombies. Let's talk about it. Um, it's kind of like, um, it, they have a tiny epic line, uh, Gambling Games, and this is sort of their Walking Dead zombies kind of thing, uh, your zombies are swarming through the Echo Ridge Mall, and you're one of the last survivors, but can you, will you continue to survive or just be lunch? And you're deciding it through there. Um, so stuck at the mall, the outbreak has basically claimed everyone. You know, fresh eating zombies, etc., um, and are you going to survive or be a ravenous zombie? It has been funded by a lot also. There's another one that's got a really good, uh, um, funding. It's one to five player game features, co uh, competitive and cooperative modes, 15 days to go. Uh, it's hit its goal by, oh God, uh, a lot more times. Like, it, like the other one, it sounded like a big number because it was like 31 times. This one is, um... Over 30 times the amount it was asking for. It was only asking for 15,000. It's got 526,000. Uh, yeah, quite a lot. Um, it's got 15 days to go also. So there's an $8 premium print and play version you can get for $8 pledge. Um, you get the retail version and all base stretch goals with 20. Um, there's a deluxe version at 25, 46, get two deluxe versions, etc. Yeah. They have cooperative, uh, cooperative versus Sami player, competitive, competitive versus Sami player, and solo. Five game modes. Uh, 30 minutes to play. Uh, little board, little figures, cards, all kinds of things. A bunch of stuff all put together for it. Tiny Epic Zombies. Um, let's see if we can find any extra stretch goals they have. Um, yeah. They've hit... Box upgrades twice, card upgrades, wood upgrades, double-sided stores, more wood upgrades, more dice upgrades, item upgrades, character upgrades, item upgrades, character upgrades, because they got a, a mechanic, and a pop star, they've added in. Oh, isn't that, isn't that adorable? Uh, there's barb bat or machete that you can have your little characters, or machine gun characters can um, they've unlocked the janitor, a security guard, a fry cook. So they do have, they still have more out there, like, an, they have a couple more stretch goals still available to get, so, you know, um, yeah. But Tiny Epic Zombies, it's funded, you can, you can get under it now, if you wish to. Alright, let's move on to the last one for today. We're almost done. Destiny Aurora. My niece, my name, and my niece. Um, you know, many kickstarts are based on basically other properties, uh, and usually get the game. Uh, in Destiny Aurora, Kickstarter isn't just for the Renegades board game. It's looking to fund a new comic and novel in the setting, um, so you can just have a new game, comic, and check it out. There's a lot more to it. Um. 
It's an exciting space odyssey following the eclectic crew of the collision officers that are during the order of the galaxy. And their exploits are going to be basically comic, novel form, and the tabletop game, which is being released. A lot of different things. So it's... Hmm, uh, 80% funded? 80, maybe? Um, about 75 to 80% funded. 25 days to go. So it's it's getting pretty good. Uh, so it's basically doing the issues 1 through 3 of its graphic novel and the tabletop game with the Kickstarter. Okay. So, uh... You can get, for $10, you just get, like, the digital copy, digital PDF of the comics and the first of the novels. Uh, there's, like, comic collectors, avid readers. You, you get the gamer for, uh... And, and you can add in the board game at some point, too. Also in there. So you get the comic and board game a lot. Combine them together as you wish. There's combinations of pledges to get the different things all together. Uh, all the Destiny Aurora kind of thing. It's, um... If you know a bunch about it, then great for you. If you don't, I don't. But, you know, whatever. Uh, and Destiny Aurora Renegades um, is the board game. Which is part of this, too. So. And then you've got the Coalition Renegades. They've got ships. Uh, all kinds of rewards. Uh... And about the... At the $100 levels where the core game gets added into the entire thing. The earlier levels, you're just getting stuff from the um, graphic novels and stuff. So, and... They have plenty of add-ons. You can always add on the game for 80. I don't think there's much else to say about it. Is if you in, would enjoy the story and kind of things set in it, and setting in it. Um, it might be something for you to check out. Destiny to Roar. But anyway, that's going to be it, though, for the news for this week. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for coming and stopping by with me to check out the news. Uh, we will be talking about many of these stories and more on this Saturday at Discussing Tabletop, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can always leave us questions about these stories or more, either in the comments of this, in the comments of any Discussing Tabletop video, on any Twitters from me, Joe, or Worm, or at DiscussingTabletop at Yahoo.com, however you want to do it. We take questions about these and more. Uh, if they're short answer questions, I'll probably just answer them right then and there. If it's something that seems a little bit more discussion worthy, we'll throw it over to Discussing Tabletop and talk about it there. Let you guys know all about it to help you out to know a little bit more about these things or just to understand things a little bit better. But regardless, though, I'll be back next week, hopefully on Tuesday, where we'll have our normal episode on of gathering the role we'll be discussing more of these things more news more things coming out more interesting things in the world of tabletop i hope everyone has a great day and I bid you farewell <laughs>